Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So it's September now and fall is knocking on the door basically. So I was thinking let's make a nice fall kind of appropriate dress and I was going through my fabric stash that you can see in the background there and I have these big rolls of wide corduroy which I really want to make something nice out of and it is a very nice and appropriate fall fabric in my opinion so I was thinking to make something out of corduroy and what better than a nice shirt dress for fall and that whole thing out of corduroy so that's what we're gonna do today and i'm super excited so the dress itself is gonna have a belt pockets of course and all the shirt things that you know so like a collar cuffs a slit in the sleeves and so on and so forth so it's gonna be somewhat of a challenge but it's doable totally doable and i'm gonna show you every single step in today's video so i hope you're excited as well and let's just get started so let's actually start with the sleeves because there is the slit that we have to do and we want to do the slit or like finish the slit when the sleeve is still open so that you have you know more and like better space to work at so you need to put some interfacing right where the slit is just around the area just up here needs to be stabilized otherwise this might rip out so that's why you do that and then you have your slip facing right here this is three centimeters wide and it is double the length of the slit plus a little bit more so that you know you don't have to be super exact with that and obviously you need it twice because you have two sleeves so what I like to do is lay right sides up and just lay this down so that the slit legs kind of open up like this because we are going to sew the slit facing right onto here and since there is no seam allowance we can only use five millimeters seam allowance and right here at the tip of the slit we don't have any seam allowance at all we can use five millimeters because the cuff is going to be attached and it's going to be voluminous so it's fine if you have some overlap it doesn't really matter since the cuff is bigger than your wrist anyways but here at the tip there's literally no seam allowance so we're gonna start working our way from the cuff seam sewing at five millimeters down to the tip of the slit and you might want to turn this around as well to one millimeter seam allowance and I'm using corduroy so this the fabric kind of sticks together weirdly so this is not gliding across super easily but basically if you look right here you want to go here in the tip and put that together with the slit facing at five millimeters so once you sew at five millimeters the seam allowance stays and then decreases only for the slit to one millimeter and then increases back to five millimeters soon after and then it's just going to stay the same towards the hem and i want to sew this with my slit so with the sleeve facing upwards at the sewing machine so that i can position my needle precisely right here and like do a little bar tack so that everything stays in place and doesn't rip out so let's do that okay now that that's done we're going to fold in the other side and fold it over just like that and covering the stitching line as we do that and we're gonna just pin it in place and then close to that edge, sew that on. Now you can also um, do, you know, not right sides together, but the facing onto the wrong side and then have the uh, stitching line on this side. That's also fine, whatever you feel comfortable with. I honestly like it better the other way around, but you know, it is what it is like that and now i'm gonna go closely to that edge you can also stitch from this side and stitch into the ditch now that that's done i also added a bar tag right here so i just put the two facings on top here and from that corner went like 45 degrees down and just have it like this and now this is the front right here this is the back the front just lays straight and the back gets folded towards the wrong side here. And I'm just gonna lay the facing right on top. And that's what I'm gonna iron. 
So basically what we can already do is finish the sleeve more or less. I'm going to add a basting stitch to the sleeve cap right here just to make it easier to fit into the arms eye. It's not like way bigger than the arms eye but a tiny bit so if you have any issues you can always add a gathering stitch into the seam allowance and then you know pull on it to gather it a teeny tiny bit and you can even work it in to your arms eye without having any folds if that makes sense so that's what this sleeve is gonna get as well I probably can also just put it into my arms eye without a gathering stitch because I have a little bit of elasticity in my fabric so if you have that too you can just you know ease it in by kind of pulling on it and like make them fit together. But if you have uh, a non-elastic fabric and this works without having elasticity in your fabric, this pattern, I mean, you can use denim, you can use any other thicker fabric, you can use corduroy without elasticity and so on and so forth. If you have that and you can't put your sleeve into your arms eye, just add a gathering stitch and gather the sleeve cap to fit your arms eye and then you can put it in the same way. But I don't think that I actually need to do that. So I'm just gonna put a right sides together here and close the sleeve side seam so that I can add the gathering stitch to the cuff seam down here because we definitely need one there. So let's put right sides together and close the sleeve side seam and then I'm also gonna overlock it and iron it towards the back of the sleeve. Now that the sleeves are done, we can prepare the cuffs and it's pretty simple. We're just gonna iron up the seam allowance on one side and then we're gonna iron the cuff in half. You're gonna find the notches for the center line in the pattern. And now we're gonna fold right sides together at the center line here. Keep the seam allowance folded up and sew the shorter edges together. Let's cut down the seam allowance here, especially at the fold line and turn it right sides out. And the cuff is prepared just like that. Now, obviously the hem of the sleeve is way too big still. So we're gonna add some basting stitches, which are gonna, which are So we're gonna add some gathering stitches, which are gonna go from like right here all the way to the other side. You're gonna find the notches in the pattern. It's about five centimeters next to the slit all around so that we can match the hem up with the cuff and put both together. So now that this is gathered to sides, as you can see, I'm going to put the non-iron side together with the wrong side of the sleeve, matching the edges up and then the in-between as well. And then I'm just going to sew both together. And once that's done, we can just flip the cuff over top and top stitch it on as well. Okay, so both of the sleeves are done. We're gonna add the uh, buttonholes and the buttons later. You can do that now already, but I just have to re-thread everything and I'm not gonna do it now. So I'm gonna continue with the front, so the lower front and the upper front, and it has a dividing seam right here. I added an interfacing tape with a stay stitch so that this does not stretch anymore as it is on the bias. And on top of that, we're using elastic fabric. So I just added that so that this is secure. So I'm gonna put right sides together here and match up the stitching line and just sew the front dividing seam here together, overlock it. I'm probably going to top stitch it down just to add some decoration. So I'm gonna iron it upwards into the upper front and then top stitch it down probably with a double top stitch. So 
So next up we're gonna add the pockets to the side seam. So we're just gonna have like pockets sitting right there in the side seams. These are the easiest pockets that you can make. If you ever have a pattern that you bought or also one that you made yourself or whatever and it doesn't have pockets but you have side seams and you really want pockets, you can always add pockets like this to any garment honestly so obviously still do a mock-up a fitting and check if everything works out but technically speaking this is very much doable so let's add these in we're gonna take the front and the back pieces this is my back piece and you're gonna find notches for the pocket opening right here this is 16 centimeters and the pocket itself is also 16 and then you have one centimeter seam allowance on either end so we're gonna put the pocket stitching line right where the notch for the pocket is right here and then the same for the other side just like that and stitch this on right here I'm also going to under stitch the seam meaning that I'm going to have the seam allowance face towards the pocket and then top stitch very closely to the fold line right there to have you know everything neat and tidy and it's going to help the pocket stay on the inside and not like randomly come out of the side seam right there and you're going to find the same thing for the front pieces and then you're going to have four side seams with four or pocket pieces in place. So now I'm gonna grab my front pieces because before we put the side seams together, I actually want to prepare the button tape here. We just have to iron it basically to prepare everything. So I'm just gonna fold in one centimeter. So like my seam allowance, gonna iron it towards the wrong side here. And then I'm gonna iron the button placket three centimeters inwards. You're gonna find on either end, you're gonna find some notches. I'm gonna pin it in place because I'm gonna stitch from the right side so that I have a nice and clean finish. So I'm just gonna sew here probably at almost three centimeters probably like 2.8 or something so that I'll make sure to catch this side as well and then I'm gonna add another stitch next to it to have a double top stitch just the same as I did for this seam here so that it just has the same signature throughout the whole piece. Okay, let's put the center back seam together. I have both of my back pieces right here. I'm just gonna put right sides together like so. So overlock and then I'm also going to top stitch it to one side. Next up, we're gonna put the body together of the dress. So let's put right sides of front and back pieces together, close the shoulder seam, and then we can also close the side seam. Now they, there are the pockets. So I'm just gonna put right sides together here and they should more or less just fit right on top of each other perfectly. So what I am going to do here at this corner is I'm gonna find the stitching line of both the front piece and then also the pocket. So it's like one centimeter down here and one centimeter in here and the cross section of that is right in here. So I'm gonna add a needle from this piece into the back piece, same right here, just into the stitching line and the edge right here should just fit perfectly on top of each other. And I'm gonna repeat the same for the lower edge here. And then I'm also going to put the pockets on top of each other. When I'm sewing this, I'm going to sew the side seams all the way towards that needle, pivot, go around the pocket to that needle, pivot again and sew down towards the hem. And that's all you have to do basically. And then the pocket is in and then it's done. So 
So next up, we're gonna take our inner collar and just close the center back seam. So we're just gonna put right sides together and sew along here and then just iron the seam allowance open. Once done with that, I actually like to iron up the seam allowance of my inner collar just at the back neckline and front neckline seam because that is in preparation for once we put the collar onto the neckline. So if we have one side already ironed up, it's just way easier and I like to do that this way around you can also do it the other way around but I find this way to be easier so the inner collar gets uh, ironed up like that and now I'm going to put right sides together of the inner and outer collar starting at the uh, edge there between uh, the uh, collar band that is technically attached to the collar in this pattern but basically what it is is the browning of the collar band so i'm going to start pinning both pieces together here at the edge between collar band and collar and since the inner collar is quite a bit smaller than the outer collar because it you know it's gonna be rolled in on itself the outer collar is gonna roll over top so therefore the inner collar doesn't need as much fabric and that's why it's smaller but you need to match both pieces up so you just need to stretch the inner collar out and pin it onto the outer collar so that both edges of the seam allowances just match up that's very important otherwise this won't work so i'm gonna pin everything together also adding up the center back with the center back seam of the inner collar and then just work my way around to the other side and yeah once that is prepared i can go ahead and sew all around the perimeter of the collar Before turning everything right sides out, I'm actually going to cut down the seam allowance of the collar. I think my camera did actually not record that, but I'm cutting down the seam allowance to about like three millimeters at the edges and then at the round areas. So just so that I'm able to turn everything right sides out. Otherwise the seam allowance is just gonna bulk up on the inside, especially here at the tip of the collar. You definitely need to cut down the seam allowance as there's just no room. And then between the, you know, in the corner between the collar band and the collar, you just need to cut towards the stitching line. To iron everything, you're gonna iron the ditch of the seam towards the inner collar just for the collar area and then for the collar band area. So basically just that round area at the front, you're gonna iron the ditch of the seam towards the outer collar. So you're gonna find this tilting point in that edge between collar band and collar because that is, if you think about how this collar is gonna sit in the end, the inner collar right here is gonna sit like this. If you think about it, this is how it's going to end up sitting. Everything attached to the necklines, of course, and then this is how it's going to end up sitting. So right here in the front, where it's folded downwards, there's actually the inner collar visible here, and that's like right at the center of your shirt dress, so that is something that will be very visible. So therefore, right here, just until that edge, you have to iron the ditch of the seam towards the outer collar, actually and then tilt that ditch towards the inner collar, like continuing on until you reach the other side here. But that's just a little something. If you really want to make your stuff look professional, that's like a small tip that you can do. And in the end, it's gonna lay like this. So all of the edges without the ditch of the seam visible are gonna face the outside of your dress and everything with the ditch you know, visible is gonna not be visible once everything is worn. So that's that. And now with that, the collar is already finished. So we can put that onto our dress or like onto the neckline. And what I like to do is how, that's also how I prepared the collar. I like to do right sides together with wrong sides. So I'm gonna put the outer collar, the side that is not ironed, you can always see it very nicely here, especially with the corduroy, with the grain line. So this is on the straight grain and then the inner collar is on the bias. So I'm gonna put the outer collar with the straight grain right sides together with the wrong side of our shirt dress. That way, everything is gonna sit correctly. I know it's it sounds weird, but the outer collar is gonna be on the inside. And then it just 
you know, folds towards the outside. That's why it's the outer collar. It's gonna be visible on the outside, even though it's sewn onto the inside. But that way we can, you know, use the pre-ironed fold of the inner collar and have everything very nicely on the side that will, will be visible in the end. So you're gonna find your shoulder notch here, which you're gonna add up with your shoulder seam. And then this is gonna be matched up with your button placket. I have, as I said, elastin in my fabric. That's why I can simply stretch this out and match it up. If you can't, because you don't necessarily need an elastic fabric for this, just cut into the stitching line every centimeter or so to make the front neckline. You can also do that for the back neckline if it doesn't work otherwise. Open up and you can match it up together with the collar better like that and now I'm gonna sew the collar on and now we can just put the inner collar right on top of that stitching line making sure to cover the actual stitching line right here we might want to cut down the seam allowance a tiny bit And now I'm gonna just top stitch it in place, but I'm also gonna go all around the collar and you know do a decorative stitch. Maybe I'm also gonna do a double stitch, I'm not sure about that yet, but I'm definitely gonna sew this down and then do a stitch all around here. So with the collar and everything done, basically the body uh, of the dress is done, we just have to attach the sleeves and do the hem. We can prepare the belt loops and, you know, sew them on because it's probably easier without the sleeves, you know, weighing everything down. You can do it afterwards as well, it doesn't really matter, but I just like to do it now. So I overlocked the sides of this strip right here, this is three centimeters wide. And what I'll do is just iron both of these sides inwards. And now I can uh, top stitch this whole strip on either side. I'm just gonna do like closely to the edge. You can do whatever you want. You can also do like three rows of top stitches. It really doesn't matter. And then we're gonna cut it in strips of eight centimeters and we're gonna cut five of this. In the pattern, you're gonna find the placement for the belt loops. I'm just gonna measure it down and bar tag these on. So I'm gonna put them right on top of the side seam. Let's put the sleeves in. As I said, you can add a gathering stitch to make it easier to put the sleeves in here, but I think I'll be fine. So I'm just gonna put the sleeves in like this, matching up the shoulder seam and the side seams, and the rest I'm just gonna ease together by stretching the fabric. And I'll make sure to not really stretch the underarm here. I'm just gonna put it like right on top of each other as it goes, because you don't wanna have like a stretched area down there. So I'm just gonna put it together however it uh, goes together here and then start easing both fabrics together about like seven centimeters higher than that. So let's put the shoulder notch together with the shoulder seam here and then the in-between we're easing together. And right here, as you can see, there's a very big difference between the two layers. So I'm actually going to cut into the seam allowance towards the stitching line in order to be able to put both of these layers together. And then you can see it kind of opens up really nicely and the rest I'm just gonna do under the sewing machine. Now I can put the sleeve in and I'm also gonna overlock it. The seam allowance right here, I'm gonna iron towards the sleeve. This is also gonna remove some of these kind of ruffles here. Okay. 
Now you could, if you want to, also top stitch the seam here. This is a very common you know, thing that you see in garments like this that also will help let these like kind of ruffles lay flat as well if you don't like that. Now we can go ahead and hem this dress. I'm just gonna double fold the hem inwards like this. This is about seven millimeters to a centimeter. I need to make like this kind of a thicker hem because my fabric is so thick. But obviously, usually I would do a five millimeter folded hem, double folded hem and top stitch it here. But you know, this needs to be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go, to go around all of the hem from one button placket side to the other. Okay, obviously dress is done. Let's actually make the belt as well. And then the whole thing is completed with the sewing portion. Almost, we have to add the buttons. <laughs> and I don't know if you already did the buttonholes, but you can do that now as well. And there will be, uh, you know, markings for where to put them on the pattern. But for the belt, I'm just gonna put right sides together. The middle is the fold line, so the center of this long piece. I'm just gonna put right sides together, leaving one side open, like, right here, I'm just gonna leave it open. And then we can turn it right sides out and you know, top stitch all around this. And while top stitching, we're also gonna close like this section right here. So let's actually do that. Okay, let's cut down the seam allowance, especially here at the corners as there will be no place for seam allowance on the inside. And I'm just gonna use a straw to, you know, turn this right sides out, basically. And I like to leave the straw inside here and actually pop out the edge of that belt as best as I can. I know this is a blunt edge, trying to get out a pointy edge, which doesn't really work that well, but that's the best I can do. I'm also twisting this edge kind of like this so that, you know, it kind of pops out like that. I think that's totally fine, especially for this fabric. And then I just need to, you know, drop it out. And that's that. Now we are going to iron this flat, but right here we also have to iron in the seam allowance and then we can top stitch it in place. And right here at the fold line, you most definitely have to cut towards the stitching line before you can iron the other side the same. And you will very soon realize that there is like this whole dog ear right here that you have to cut away in order to be able to put both layers right on top of each other. And I'm just gonna pin it in place and iron the rest. And now I'm just gonna sew right around it and close this as well. You can also hand sew it if you want to. You can have a clean finish without any top stitches and then you just need to hand sew this close. You can do anything, honestly, like this is totally up to you. I'm just gonna top stitch it. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I am super excited for this dress. I hope I'll get so many chances to wear this because it seems like this is a good middle ground between like fashion and also practicability, I guess. Practicality, practi practi like it's a practical outfit to wear, which I very, very much like. I like to have clothing that serve a purpose. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sunday, so you can keep an eye out for that. I am actually thinking about starting a new series that I am currently, you know, developing. I hope you are ready for that. It's something with AI, so I'm not sure how to make it happen, but I would be super happy to actually do something like that if you're interested. Okay, I'm just realizing that I literally make no sense. So what I'm saying, basically, I'd love to have your help for an upcoming series, hello, um, that I am trying to do. It's something with AI and I mean by that, I want to generate like designs by AI with like interesting, uh, you know, commands that you can also, you know, do or like that you can give me. <laughs>
So I don't know if you've ever worked with an AI photo program. So basically it's a text to picture thing. You just type in whatever you feel like and it spits out a photo. And I was thinking about like giving commands like show me a woman with a full length dress, a corset, a lot of bow ties, ruffles and lace in spring colors inspired by Disney characters or whatever, you know, like this sort of thing. So if you have any suggestions that I can make an AI develop into pictures, pop them down in the comment section and maybe I'll use something for an upcoming video or I'll get inspired by your suggestions. That would be amazing because for me, it's super difficult. First, I have to do it in a second language. Second, I have a picture in mind, I guess. So I am, you know, always going for a specific thing and it's kind of always the same that comes out. So it would be great to have like a broader spectrum of ideas. That would be amazing if you could help me with that. And I hope this makes more sense now because that was weird what I was saying there. <laughs> in between my uploads, make sure to also check out my social media. Links are in the description down below. I'm, you know, uploading loads of reels all around my project. So that might be of interest to you too. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store where you'll also find this pattern right here. So many other ones also with different levels of difficulty. So you can sort in my shop by levels of difficulty from like easy to advanced. That's just something that I wanted to mention as I think that's a really nice thing to have. So go check that out. Also, thank you so much to my channel members. You can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys.